What is going on guys? Welcome to your sixth tutorial and how to create a Java stock market analyzer program. And in this tutorial, we're going to be building a new class which I already built. And I'm going to be teaching you guys how to take that old array that we created with all that string information in it and convert it into the kind of information we want. And this is either a float, which is pretty much a number with a decimal point, or a date. Since remember, the first item in each of those rows was a date object. So we need to separate that object and uh, extract it from all the other numbers such as floats and stuff. So as you can see I already created a new class called formulas because I'm pretty much going to be putting a couple formulas in here and don't forget to import Java Util and simple date format like this. So now our pretty much program has three classes. The stock market class which has our main method in it this read files class which in essence pretty much just reads whatever file we tell it to and this formulas class which we're going to be building today so hopefully you work your way up to here so let's go ahead and get started the first thing we need is of course an object from this read files class so go ahead and put read files and name it like r or something and set equal to new read files so now we can use all the methods in read files through the object r <clears throat> now what we need after this is we need two um, different arrays we need an array to hold the data and we need the array to hold the dates so let me go ahead and I'll show you um, if I can remember where I put it C stocks Dow here we go since this first item is a date so we're going to be storing all of these dates in the first column in an array and we're going to be storing all of this data everything but these dates in another array so this one's going to be a one dimensional one and this one's going to be two dimensional since it has more than one per row so let's go ahead and create a float and this is going to be a multi-dimensional array and name it data array and set it equal to new float and for the row number set r dot find row number right there and for the column number remember it's going to be equal to seven since there were eight originally but we're taking one of the dates away actually there's seven originally and we're going to be filling the date one with a zero but don't worry about that for now and we're also going to be creating a date array so name this d-a-t-e array and set with this one equal to new date and of course the length of this is equal to r dot find row number right there so again we have this find row number method that we built right here and that is why we needed to build it since whenever we created our array we needed to figure out how long to make our array so that's why we needed that method so now that we created uh, our object so we could pretty much use these and a data array and a date array let's go ahead and make that date array right now <clears throat> so in essence how I'm gonna create this date array from the old array that I just showed you is I'm gonna pretty much loop through that old array get the first element out of each of those rows and put it in my new array so go ahead make a method called public void create date array make sure you spell that right pretty important and for your arguments what you're going to pass into here is the old array now put string and make sure you don't hit caps lock string you're going to pass in a multi-dimensional array and you're going to name it n so now anytime we put n it knows we're talking about our array and now we need a simple date format object and I'm just gonna name it DF for date format so I remember and this pretty much means how you want your format how your dates are formatted so I'm gonna set it equal to new simple date format and as your format right here you type a string variable of year 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 minus month month and your months have to be in capitalized letters and then your days are in a lowercase so that's how our date is formatted in our um, file so and make sure you put uppercase M's because lowercase M has to do with minutes I believe 
So now that we got our date format, we can go begin making our loops. So for, let's go ahead and loop through the rows first. Int x equals zero. Um, then go ahead and put like x is less n dot length right there. And just go ahead and increment it by one each time using x plus plus. And now for our inner loop, and I got an, what the heck do I got that? Oh, here we go. Make sure you don't do that. So now we're looping through our rows. Now we got to loop through our columns. So for, and we'll just name this one, int y equals zero, y is less than n of x dot length, and just increment that by y each time. So now we're not only looping through the rows each time, but we're also looping through each element in the row. And what we want to do as a function here, if y equals zero, and what this is going to mean, all right, if we have, if we get to the first item in each row, what do we want to do? So let's go ahead and put if y equals zero. And why do we need this check to make sure it's the zeroth element, aka the first element? Because we don't want to convert anything else to a date except that first element. So let me show you guys real quick. Stocks, Dow. We don't want to convert any of these to a date right here. We just want to convert that first element right here, which is the zeroth element. Here, here, here. So this is the zeroth element in row zero. This is zero in row one, two, three. So that's why we have to check, and we only want to do this if y is equal to zero. Remember, y is the column. So what do we want to do if y is equal to zero? Well, let's go ahead and first make our try catch. Um, catch all exceptions. Exception E and, and I spell it E X C E P T I N. Exception E and just put it equal to something like system out out print line. Just print out E. There we go. And now for our try statement, let's go ahead and put um, date. The first thing we have to do is have a new variable called new date you can name it and we need to parse the old date or pretty much change it from a string to a date so what do you do set this equal to date to parse it and df date format parse and you write in the argument what do you want to parse well we want to parse n which is our um, multi-dimensional array of x and that's the row number of zero because it's a zeroth element and you can put y right here, but remember, we're checking for y up here, so it's only going to run if y is equal to 0. And now, we need to take the date array we just created. Date array, remember, we created it right here. It's a single dimensional array of x, and we need to set this equal to the new date right there. So it's pretty much, is this is going to run through your old multi-dimensional array, this is going to check if it's the first element in the array. This is going to change it from a string variable to a date. And what this is going to do is put that ver or excuse me, put that value into a new array called date array. And this x will increment each time. So that is how that happens. So we're going to be pretty much doing the same thing with the data array, but since it's a multi-dimensional array, it's going to be a little different. But for now, we have this set and all we have to do to create the date array is just run this method so that is how you do that so um thank you guys for watching in the next tutorial i'm probably going to show you guys how to create the data array so again thank you don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you next time